Last week, Lady Luck and the competition kicked up on Chris Borch, putting his chances for victory up in smoke. Take advantage, Adam McGill romping to his first victory of the year. The battle for the win is wide open this weekend. Racer TV is next. Welcome to Racer TV's coverage of the largest race of the year. Over 10,000 spectators on hand for this Amsoil Ironman GNCC in Indiana. One of the wildest racetracks and some hardy fans looking to get involved with the action today. We cannot wait to bring it to you. I'm Jason Wygan, of course, your host. The championship in the ATV ranks already wrapped up for the season, but we've got a great battle shaping up for the overall win today. Also get a lot of fans on hand. Of course, this is the GNCC race for breast cancer awareness and a lot of stories to tell in many different ways. How about this little lady, Tracy Checo, taking her ninth women's championship this year and her husband, Jeff Pickens, will be out racing this afternoon amongst the pro riders trying to lock down a top 10 finish for the year. Let's check in with the privateer on the Yamaha, Jeff Pickens. Um, it hasn't exactly went how I planned. You know, everybody comes in with certain goals. Um, I had a few injuries this year that uh, set me back a little bit, but uh, I'm healthy now, so we're going to finish the season strong, and, you know, we're already getting ready for next year. So uh, all in all, it was good. You know, when you're competing against the pro class, it's uh, these guys are on top of their game, so whoever puts their work in, you know, they get the job done. So it's definitely tough, but I'm happy with where I'm at right now. I work construction. I, I build and update water and sewage plants. Um, I travel all the time, I'm pretty much on the road, you know. I'm fortunate enough to work 410s, so my company works for me as far as that, so I get Fridays off, but uh, you know, there's there's really not enough time in the day. I don't get to do much riding or training through the week, it's the weekends, and it seems like I'm always working on bikes, but uh, we do the best with it, and uh, we still have fun with it, so yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely hard, you know, you, you can't take nothing away from these guys, you know, everybody works hard. Um, having a full-time job definitely, I, I feel, puts me at a little disadvantage, but you know, if, if I had, every day off to do this, you know, I, I think I'd do a little better, but I still think it'd probably be, you know, similar results to a certain extent, because, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of people with a lot of natural talent out here, so, uh, you know, it's the best of the best, so it's tough. It's going to be tough, but he does have the support of his wife, Tracy, there, who just completed the two-hour morning race of the women's class. Here's Chris Borich, your champ, see the pink, and his girlfriend wearing some pink as well. Everyone getting into the spirit of this race, Jared McClure, he's into it with the pink helmet. Johnny Gallagher doing the same here. Big spectator count on hand, over 10,000 fans. Biggest crowd of the year. And they're here to see some fireworks, not just up in the air, but also on the racetrack. And we have a perfect racetrack for it. 11 miles, we're gonna race for two hours. And this track is muddy, a lot of rain has come down in the last couple of days. So it is gonna be a challenge to a man. Just about every rider says this is their favorite course of the year. It's fast, it's also difficult and it's fun all at once. And we're about to go racing here at the Amsoil Ironman GNCC. Adam McGill in the pink gear. Last week's winner looking good down on the inside. Cut it a little bit too tight. And I believe that's Craig Bauman, privateer, gonna grab his first motorsport.com hole shot of the year. He's had a couple of good starts. This is his best. 50 bucks for just about 30 seconds worth of work. There is Miguel to second, but he goes wide. Found a bad line there and loses the spot. I think the number 13 of Eric Hoyland is going to take it over. And all the pink gear and graphics and stickers, everyone's running. They're about to be turned brown because, as I said, a lot of rain has come down on this track. And there's going to be a real strategy to taking on this type of quagmire. You do not want to waste your goggles and your gloves early. You go 11 miles around before you get to your pit. So you don't want to run out of vision in the first mile. These ATVs, they kick up a lot of mud. Jared McClure going right into the number one spot. If you want to go for it in these muddy conditions, 
you can take advantage. He decided to take the chance of really pinning it through that slop, and he takes the lead. But now we're up to Iron Man Hill, one of the most famous obstacles in all of Grand National Cross Country Racing. About 40 different lines, I'd say, are going to open up on this hill. And this rider, Walker Fowler, is taking the best one. I didn't even see him amongst the leaders. And now the kid out of Ohio is in the number one spot. Another big hill climb here, although really only one fast line at the top of this one. Brian Wolf, McClure, Chris Borich, all the top group. There's the number four of Chris Bithel. It has changed rapidly, that Iron Man hill. You go through the water, and then once you conquer that section, you got to figure out the best way to the top, and it's going to change every lap. This is another one of those big hill climbs. And the red machine, the JG off-road Honda of Wolf, I think he might have figured out the best way to the top. Uh, Taylor Kaiser, the number three, is in the hunt. Yes, Wolf has taken over the lead, and he has already lost the goggles. So like I said, risk and reward early here at the Ironman. Look at the bridge at the top. Just filled with spectators. Another big hill climb here. And this is what these fans have come to see. They might not even know the names or the numbers of these riders. They just want to watch the action. They have no idea who's leading the race, but they know every time they get to these hills and these mud bogs, something's going to change. And Fowler is in the lead for the second time today. Just fighting his way through in the balance racing Yamaha. Well done for the kid on the number five. And it is just any rider's guess as to what's the best line through here. You don't want to get hung up or stuck. Don't want to get too much water on either. There's a 13 of Hoyland. He doesn't have goggles. Here's Boric into the pits. He's got fresh goggles from his dad, Joe. They offered him a some paper towels to put in the bars to wipe off the grips. He didn't need it. Taylor Kaiser in and out of the pits. This is getting crazy at the Ironman. Stay with us. The Can-Am Renegade 1000 XXC with the most powerful engine in the industry. The Outlander 1000 XT with a redesigned chassis for unequal trail riding. The Commander 1000 Limited, the most equipped, luxurious side-by-side -side in the industry. The facts say it's the most advanced lineup out there. But the ride says it all. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am. By Amsoil. and by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. NBC Sports coverage of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series. Jared McClure, you cannot tell, but he's riding on the number seven. National Guard Honda is leading the way. Chris Boric is second, and this is a true Ironman race. There's a reason they call it the Amsoil Ironman. It's a rough and tumble course under any conditions, but with all the rain we've taken on the last couple of days, it's going to be hard to stay in the number one spot even when you get there. There's just so many lines, so many places to get stuck. We've already seen the lead change hands about half a dozen times. We've got this steep hill climb, and Brian Wolf gives you an example of what can happen. He has gotten stuck. That was the short way around. He didn't have to hang that left midway up the hill. The straight line was just too difficult to conquer, and he has lost a ton of ground on the 341. Look at that technique the knee over the seat to get maximum weight over those rear tires. So now it's Walker Fowler leading the way with Chris Boric behind him. Fowler, we say it week in, week out, lots of hype. This guy was in the XC2 class last year. That's the stepping stone to this pro division. He won every race in that class last year. No one has ever done that. Big expectations from the challenge Boric for wins this year. Yes, he has challenged him, but no, he has not been able to seal the deal and get one. Week in, week out, we say is today the day. So let's say it again. Is today the day Walker Fowler delivers a win for the Balance Racing Yamaha team? But he's got Boric right behind him. And that's a good place to be in if you're Chris Boric. He just likes to stay in touch with these guys early and then attack late. And every one of these riders knows it. It's the shark in the water. You're always worried about where Chris Boric is, no matter how big a lead you have. 
Fowler takes a look over his shoulder, trying to figure out, is his line the best one? All the way off to our left, Ryder's right. A little bit drier there. Jared McClure doing a good job in third. McClure has really stepped up this year. We talked about it quite a bit. There's Chris Bithell on the podium at our last race on the Can-Am. He is fourth. Taylor Kaiser fifth. And with Brian Wolf getting stuck and some of the other riders who had good fortune early in the race dropping back, it might boil down to a five rider fight as they just kind of chug their way through this water. By the way, very cold out here today too, so that's another reason you don't want to pin it through there. Just run with the chills. You've got a race for two hours. You take on half a gallon of water, of ice water in the bottom of your boots. It's gonna make you that much less comfortable. Although these guys are tough. They probably don't care about that. It's more about protecting the machine through those sections. Here it is, fans out here in droves of these hill climbs. Look at how many people are on that creek bank at the bottom. They wanna see some action. You're Chris Borich, you're trying to minimize that kind of drama. Now he's in the pits, taking on fuel. Let's see what the number seven of McClure does. Yeah, he will take on gas as well. Borch is already out. No, that's Bithel, and Bithel time and time again gets great gas mileage and is able to skip the pits. And this has become a game of you first, no you first, between Borch and McClure. There goes Kaiser, and Fowler is still in the pits. Not sure what's happening there, a long pit stop. So the kid who has led this race a couple of times today, he's got some catching up to do. Stay with us. When it's time to get ready to ride and you need gear, it's time to go to RockyMountainATV.com. With the largest selection of ATV parts, apparel, and accessories, we have what you need at deep discounts. We have a huge state-of-the-art facility that ensures your order ships out quickly with accuracy that's second to none. Most items ship free and arrive at your door in three days or less. Visit our industry-leading website, RockyMountainATV.com today for the best prices, quickest shipping, online support, and largest in-stock selection around. RockyMountainATV.com. Get ready. Racer TV is brought to you by can -Am, by Amsoil, and by Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Give you the highlights of our can -Am morning race. We'll start out with the women's class. We talked to you about it at the top of the show. Tracy Checko now nine. Women's class championships going to run that pink number one plate today and trying to take the win. Running Pickens on the back of the jersey today for a new last name, uh, married to our pro racer Jeff Pickens over the summer. But competition, as always, comes from Pennsylvania's Angel Atwell. She has won plenty of races and championships of her own, and Angel was on the gas today, able to take the women's class win. Congratulations to her. And we move on to the open and 4x4 divisions. This is the U2 class, and I'll tell you what, these guys can really fly in these muddy conditions. Cliff Beasley out of Tennessee has announced this season will be his last. So last chance for guys to get some revenge on him and beat him in the class, not happening. He takes the win over Jordan Phillips in E2. And it would not be a morning race update without an update on the 201 of Dave Simmons, who has made mincemeat of the morning race field in the 45 plus class that over 201 on the Yamaha, just dominant again. Wins the class and wins the overall for the eighth time in 12 races this year. Beasley and Atwell round out the top three. Nice mixture of machines, experience, and yes, even genders on the morning race podium. Here, things a little more cut and dry. All 450cc, two-wheel drive ATVs, and it's the pro guys duking it out. Chris Bithell, aided by a good pit strategy, is in the lead. Chris Boric and Jared McClure are second and third, and they have a nice lead over everyone else. And now Boric has taken the lead from Bithell. Bithell just entering the water in second. I believe we'll have to stop in the pits for fuel the next time around. Boric and McClure already did. So the strategy for Bithell would have been to try to open up as big a lead as possible. He was doing it, but he must have made a mistake. And that has allowed Boric to take the lead. Now we're headed to some of those big hill climbs. See those pink t-shirts, the Boric Bandits. He's got a lot of fans out here. The four-time series champ to the top of the hill. No worries, mate. Second place, Bithell. Third place, McClure. Up to the top. And what was once a five-rider pack might be a three-rider duel now. I don't see Fowler or Kaiser on the Yamahas in the hunt at the moment. But we know on the track this muddy, ruts this deep, it could change quickly. It's a fan rare 
wearing a pink referee shirt. Couldn't really decide which he, which look he was going to go for, the pink thing or the ref thing. A little bit of both. Now, Chris Boric usually waits until late to get the lead, but one of the few times we've ever seen him just check out on the field was at this race. Later in the season, I think when he has the title, he says, you know what, I don't have anything to lose. I'm going to go for it. His good buddy Bithel sticking with him right now, and they've opened it up a bit on McClure. So has the field of contenders gone from five to three to two? And remember, Bithel has to pit. No, wait a minute. One of the Yamahas, I think that is Kaiser, makes a run for it and is suddenly in the lead. At one point, he had just closed in front of uh, uh, McClure here. Hard to keep up. McClure is in second, so apparently Bithel and Boric ran into trouble, and this is Fowler up to third. Well, we knew this course was going to lead to a very dynamic race, a lot of ups and downs, and that's exactly what has happened. It is so treacherous. But I don't think these boys get frustrated. It's really fun, actually, to race a track like this. I mean, wouldn't you like to hit a hill climb like this wide open and see if you can get to the top? Boric has some ground to make up now. He was in the lead. It looked like everything was under his control. Fowler is now taking the lead from his teammate, Kaiser. Probably about the fourth time Fowler has had the lead in this one. And he is being very calculating with it. As we go into the last lap, a couple of looks over his shoulder. How big is the lead? And he knows exactly what happened to Bithel and Boric could happen to him with a lap to go. Can the kid hang on for his first win of the year? Stay with us. Eddie Engine. Any season. At home. At the track. Or on the trail. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Racer TD is brought to you by Can Am. By Amsoil. And by Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Big battle on our hands here at the Ironman GNCC brought to you by Amsoil. Walker Fowler, who is outside the top five at one point in this race, is in the lead in the last lap with his balance racing Yamaha teammate Taylor Kaiser second. Jared McClure is third. And these are riders in other classes, some of our amateur riders who are on lap down. Where is Chris Borch? There he is. And there is Chris Bithel, and the word is, those two both got stuck on a hill climb. We knew that would be a factor. Now normally Fowler would be going nuts to get around these lap riders, but I think he knows today it's not gonna come down to that. It's gonna come down to who doesn't get stuck in the mud and who doesn't get stuck on the hill climbs. Losing a second or two to a lap rider, you could lose a minute on one of these hills. And here he is attacking. Trying to get to the top of that hill. Here's his teammate Taylor Kaiser in second. He's going to go all the way to the right. There's McClure right behind him. Second, third, and fourth now. Boric all in contention. Oh, Kaiser on the upper right has gotten stuck. That is Kaiser stuck. McClure all the way to the left, and Boric as well. They're both going to get around him. Kaiser has just gotten himself unstuck, but he's just lost two positions. And it can change that quickly here at the Ironman. McClure on the number seven, and here's Boric there, not out of this. One mistake like that from Fowler, and they're right there. Kaiser staying glued to them as well. There's Fowler staying on the gas. It's all about the momentum. Keep the machine moving in these muddy conditions. And now they're just ignorant of the mud. They do not care about getting splashed, trashing goggles or gloves now. It's the last lap and everything is on the line. In one of the biggest races of the year, they all want to win it. Kaiser is in front of Boric again. Unbelievable, the obstacles literally and figuratively these riders have had to overcome today. So far, Fowler has done it best, but he knows there's a lot of hazards here in the final lap. Here's another tough section, getting through this water, getting through this mud. There's big rocks down there. Listen to him just feathering the throttle and the clutch in this section, trying to keep the revs up, trying to control the power output with the clutch as much as the throttle. 
and everyone trying to stick to the creek bank. And they are close again. Oh, almost too close to the creek bank goes Borich, almost toppled over. But they are in striking distance. Another big hill coming up. If Fowler fouls it up there, they can get around him, but the kid is doing a good job. Just burying the throttle on that Yamaha 450. Kaiser back up to second. What a run for him. Borich and McClure are right there. Any one of these four riders can win it. We are, oh, and McClure's gotten stuck. Tires are just spinning. Must have caught a rock or a tree root, and now the fans trying to pitch in. That dirt is like ice on those hill climbs, so a mistake on the hill has cost McClure. Past the halfway point in this last lap now. It's going to come down to who can minimize the mistakes. There's McClure trying to make up for what happened to him. And we check back in with Chris Bithel. He and Boric had gotten stuck early on this last lap. Boric able to recover. Bithel not quite as quickly. And here it is, out in the open stuff for the last time. No more hills or mud to deal with. Walker Fowler, a lot of people thought.